Hi everyone. So for those of you who are looking for a relatively easy Sicilian to start out learning and you want to avoid mountains and mountains of theories that come along with it, then the Khan Sicilian could be a really good choice for you. Um, in fact, it was the very first Sicilian which I first started out playing and I got a lot of success with it. So I'm going to share with you in this video some of the ideas, setups that come along with it as well as um, the repertoire I used to reach master level. So I hope you guys enjoy this content. If you do, do feel free to leave a comment down below and a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more regular uploads. And otherwise, I'm just going to jump straight into the repertoire. I hope you guys enjoy the content. Now the Khan Sicilian starts out after the moves pawn to e4, c5, knight f3, pawn to e6, d4, starting the open Sicilian, we capture the pawn, white captures back, and black plays his move pawn to a6, and this is really the start of the Khan. And from here on, I'm going to cover most of white's options apart from the move pawn to c4, which is actually going to lead us into a Maroxy bind setup, or as black we call this the hedgehog structure, which I will deal with in a separate video. But for this one, I will deal with everything else, starting with the move knight to c3 in this position. So there are lots of moves for black you could play, like b5 and knight c6 and so on, but the way I play it is I put my queen on c7, I think it's the most flexible way to play the Khan, and it leaves you with a lot of different options. Now the reason why I love the Khan is the first thing that most people learn when they're first starting out the open Sicilian for white is the English setup, which involves putting your bishop on e3, and then bringing your queen to d2, castling, playing f3, and marching your kingside pawns. But unfortunately against the Khan, it doesn't work for white. I've had a number of games against even strong opponents, 21, 2200 plus, who fell into this, you say, trap. Bishop b4 is a really good move here. After the move queen to d2, if white uh, tries to go into it anyway, after the move knight to f6, white plays the move pawn to f3, but now black can immediately hit out in the center with the move pawn to d5, and here white gets into a whole lot of trouble. For example, one game, uh, one opponent played the move pawn takes, but after the move knight takes here on d5, because the bishop is being attacked and the knight on c3, more importantly, is also being attacked, white could only find the move knight to e2 as the best option, but now black can simply capture this bishop on e3, and after the move queen takes e3, just continue developing with, let's say, knight d7, knight f6, but taking that dark squared bishop off the board um, is absolutely huge, because there is really no more attack for white after that. Um, I also had a couple of games where opponents played the move bishop to d3 here, but this unfortunately runs straight into a loss of a piece. So after the move pawn to e5, unfortunately white has to move the knight, and then gets hit with the move pawn to d4. Uh, yes, white can sacrifice a piece here for two pawns, but it's not enough, and black will have a winning position afterwards. Now, after the move knight to c3, queen to c7, other moves for white might be the move pawn to g3. In, in this scenario, um, we still go the move bishop to b4. This is a really good option for black, forcing white to drop his knight back to e2. And then we can continue with the move knight to f6. Let's say bishop to g2, uh, both sides can castle. And then most of the time, we head towards a position where we put the bishop on e7, we play the move pawn to d6 to sort of defend central squares, stopping e5 later on, and then we'll start developing our uh, knight and bishop on the queen side. So this is a very common way to develop your pieces. Knight to c6, here we play the move pawn to d6, pawn to g4, and pawn to b5. So this is what we call a Shevenigan structure, where the pawns run e6 and d6. Black is attacking on the queen side here, white is attacking on the king side. It's fine with the king side attack, usually you can defend this pretty comfortably as black. Here black can just drop the knight back if it gets chased to d7 and we'll maneuver the rook to e8. The bishop will sort of drop back to f8 and then we'll slowly sort of 
set up a fianchetto on the king side. But this is a very standard position, and I think black is um, doing fine here. So other options here, instead of if that, is the move bishop to e2, which is also very, very popular. Um, you can go straight into a Shevenigan type of structure straight away by going knight f6, d6, and try to transpose back. But I feel like we can avoid all that by playing the move pawn to b5 here. Castle is bishop to b7. And in this position, let's say white plays the move pawn to a3, which is quite a passive move. The way we develop our pieces as black is to play knight f6. And this bishop will usually go to either c5 or perhaps to e7. Um, generally, I'm going to suggest to move bishop to c5 whenever this knight is undefended, just to get a tempo on the knight and then drop it back to e7 or a7. But most of the time, yeah, we're going for a setup like this, where the pawn will be on d6, bishop on e7. And this knight will either go to c6 or d7, castles, castles. And this is uh, generally where uh, our pieces will end up most of the time in this opening. And I think it's a very harmonious way to develop your pieces in general. If we go back, let's say over here, so let's say white plays the move bishop to f3. We have other options as well, of course, so we don't have to go for this d6 knight to d7 type of setup. We can play for the move, uh, let's say knight to c6. We even have some options here, sometimes of playing bishop to d6 in the Khan, putting the bishop on e5. This is also a very interesting uh, type of idea. Here we're hitting the h2 pawn. So we get a tempo, but knight c6 or knight d7 are standard. Here if knight c6, let's say white captures it, you can just recapture back either with the pawn or with the bishop. Uh, generally, I prefer taking with the pawn. I quite like these structures where you take with the d pawn. Let's say queen e2, you could play bishop d6, you could play e5 in this position just to stop white from playing e5. Or bishop d6 also stops e5. And black has a pretty comfortable position again. We can stick the bishop on e5 here and play, you know, c5, knight e7. And in general, it's, it's very comfortable for black. So instead of those particular moves, the main move in this position is definitely bishop to d3. Now, after the move bishop to d3, I'm pretty much always going to suggest bishop to c5 whenever the knight on d4 is not defended. So after the move bishop to c5, white can defend it with the move bishop to e3 I suppose, but then uh, as black if your bishop is not being chased you can probably just keep it on c5, develop with knight f6, play d6, knight d7 or knight c6 and continue from there. But generally white will drop the knight back to chase it away and then you can bring it back to e7. It's very important that you don't go to a7 in this position. It is, um, in fact, uh, a blunder. You can do it when the queen is on d8, but when the queen is not on d8, I think queen g4 is simply winning here for white, or leads to a very big advantage. So you definitely have to get a move bishop e7 here. And then let's say after the move queen to g4 here, well, black can simply play the move pawn to g6. So this is something we'll have a look at later, but it's um, it's perfectly okay for black to do so. After the move castles, pawn to d6, pawn to f4. And in this position, again, um, you have to be a little bit careful in this exact position because you should play the move knight to d7 first. If you go knight to f6 here, I think e5 is a very, very strong sacrifice, which not many people know about. And if black captures the pawn, white recaptures, queen takes, bishop f4 is extremely annoying here. Actually, the line goes queen h5, bishop to e2, queen to g6. The queen has almost no squares to go to. Like it, It's pretty much all controlled along the fifth rank. So we really only have a couple of squares here, f5, g6, h5. And instead of repeating moves and accepting a draw, which we would in fact be very happy with here. 
uh, white can play a very strong move pawn to h4 and i think white is actually winning here for example if we play the move pawn to h5 to stop at h5 then white can play the move bishop to g5 and now the threat of bishop to d3 actually trapping our queen is very very strong and very hard to stop so be very mindful of this and and try to um, play knight d7 first so then you prevent this whole e5 pawn sacrifice so here generally white has two main setups they go for ones where the queen's on f3 or the queen's on e2 so let's have a look at the queen on e2 first knight f6 bishop to d2 let's say the move pawn to b5 which is the setup we're generally going for rook to e1 so white is playing for a quick e5 pawn break here now the best plan i would say against this sort of idea from white is to play this move pawn to b4 which i've had in um, a number of games after the move pawn to b4 one game i had it went knight to d1 and then here i castled with the idea that white is unable to capture this pawn because of the move queen to b6 check picking up the bishop on b4 and also by kicking the knight away we answer the move pawn to e5 with a square frown knight on d5 whereas with the nine c3 we're unable to use that d5 square because white would just capture it now in this position knight f2 was played and in the game i had i went pawn to a5 now generally in this i set up um, the idea is to trade off these light squared bishops because that's by far the most dangerous piece white has so if we can sort of trade off these light squared bishops then black is relatively happy and we're going to do this by playing you know queen b6 or bishop a6 at some point uh, maybe even a4 knight c5 so i had one game here which continued i think pawn to e5 and then i played knight to d5 here uh, with a complicated game but uh, black is doing okay so another game continued queen to f3 pawn to b5 bishop to e3 knight f6 again here e5 is well met by the move bishop to b7 attacking the queen so a3 bishop to b7 let's say rook a to e1 and once you get into this type of position, generally you have two main plans. So one plan is going to involve being a little bit more aggressive and keeping the king in the center, and that's to play the move pawn to h5. So this is not for every position, by the way. Only certain positions this works quite well. Generally, whenever you have the bishop on e3 it works quite well because the knight goes to g4 and attacks the bishop so you win a tempo there or generally if the king is on h1 let's say the king goes here sometimes you can play the move pawn to h4 and try to undermine this diagonal so for example let's say white plays the move pawn to h3 to prevent you playing h3 otherwise black would push the pawn up the board then let's say you play the move knight h5 knight e2 to stop the knight jumping into the g3 square and black would play a move such as f5 here to try and undermine this diagonal and things get very very complicated here and i think black is doing okay though um, but yeah things get very very messy but it, if this is the type of position you're looking for then h5 is the way to go um, sometimes you can also just put your knight on g4 and then you can even sometimes challenge white's um, pawn on f4 with the move pawn to g5 and try to put a knight onto this e5 square so this g5 move could be quite useful later on but otherwise yeah your knight goes to g4 if it gets chased by h3 sometimes you can even just leave it there um, so it's, it's a very double-edged game uh, the other plan of course is the more let's say normal one which is just to castle the king and look for pawn breaks in the center so looking for a pawn to d5 or maybe a knight to c5 type of pawn break or if you're getting attacked with the move let's say pawn to g4 sometimes 
you can also defend your king with say g6 and then maneuver your knight like this and rook e8 the bishop can still maneuver back as well and sometimes by pushing the pawns too quickly white can create a lot of weaknesses as well in the position so this is another way uh, to play for black and of course you can also look for moves like d5 as well sort of hit out in the center that's sort of the typical way to meet this type of attack with g4 all right so now we get into the main line option by far and that is the move bishop to d3 here on move five without knight c3 included so in this position black plays the move bishop to c5 again attacking the knight the knight drops back now you do actually have two options in this position i think bishop a7 is actually probably the more solid option and objectively it's probably better than bishop to e7 but even still um, i quite like the move bishop to e7 but definitely you should have bishop a7 um, in your repertoire the main difference compared to the previous line i showed you is that since the queen is not on c7 uh, queen g4 is met by queen f6 but we're going to look at the move bishop to e7 mainly for this repertoire and here for example if white castles we can play the move pawn to d6 again we're going for the same setup so for example if white goes for something like c4 or doesn't go for c4 it doesn't make a huge difference we'll still play in the same manner and here we're going for the move pawn to b6 again with the same sort of plans we have this hedgehog formation as black and after the move king h1 again we have two different plans in this position one is to castle and one is to play the move pawn to h5 so i played pawn to h5 in this particular game and after the move rook to e1 i played the move pawn to h4 and actually my opponent uh, blundered in this position if he played h3 then knight h5 was the threat and actually it's un unstoppable the threat of knight to g3 um, instead my opponent make a serious mistake here with the move pawn to e5 I'm um, expecting me to move the knight but ran straight into pawn takes pawn takes and h3 and we see now the h pawn is incredibly strong here opening this diagonal uh, and the game continued rook to f2 now, of course he's unable to capture here in f6 because pawn takes g2 queen takes g2 and actually queen takes h2 would lead to a nice checkmate So the game continued rook f2 but then after pawn takes rook takes um, now black is completely winning of course uh, we don't have to take the rook straight away though because the pin is extremely annoying instead we just cast with queen side normally you wouldn't be able to cast with queen side but in this particular position we can because this bishop and queen battery aren't attacking a6 they're sort of blocked by the c4 pawn and again white can't take because of this checkmate so white, um, yeah, so, so white is instead um, just in a lost position after castles. But if we go back, um, of course you can just castle here as well. That's perfectly fine. And after rookie one, again, play the typical ideas um, I mentioned earlier like with g6 to give your knight a square on h5 if it's ever chased with e5 the knight can go to h5 and this is fine this is totally fine for black um, sometimes you can defend against e5 indirectly as well you can sort of move your rook let's say rook to d8 this is another way to defend against e5 because let's say if e5 comes you can take take and then take like this and let's say if white trades everything off then the bishop on d3 is hanging at the end so this is another way to defend against this sort of threat but let's go back to move seven so the biggest i guess threat for black is probably queen to g4 here we play the move pawn to g6 queen to e2 pawn to d6 castles 
knight to d7. The whole point of queen to g4 is that white's going to get into the same position, but say that, you know, this g6 pawn move weakens our position quite considerably. But in a lot of the cases, we're actually going to not castle the king anyway, and we're just going to go for a h pawn push, as you'll see. So knight a3 here is um, a move instead of knight to c3. This one is a particularly annoying move to face as well. So after this one, I would suggest probably knight to e5. If, if knight to f6, then the idea from white is to go bishop h6. You can play this position, but it's not particularly pleasant, I would say. So here, I think white should play the move knight to e5. And in this position, white has a couple of ideas. If he goes f4, we just capture the bishop. Uh, once these bishops go off, um, there's not as much danger. Here, we just play knight f6 in castles, and black is fine. After the move, knight to c4. Here, we can go knight takes, takes, and then queen c7. And here, for example, let's say white plays the move pawn to a4. We continue with knight to f6. And if bishop h6 here, our idea as black is to play the move pawn to d5, which in this exact position seems to work quite well and it equalizes for black. The idea is that we have all these tactics involving knight g4 and this bishop on h6 is hanging. So for example, let's say pawn takes, we can capture back. Now if bishop to d3, already black is completely winning after the move knight to g4 because there's no way to defend the piece and the checkmate threat. Therefore, after pawn takes, he already has to play very, very accurate moves. Like he has to play, let's say, bishop to say rook to e1. And after move rook to e1, let's say pawn takes c4. It's a couple moves for white. So let's say bishop to g7 is one move, knight to g4 is a good reply to that. Because actually you can't take the rook in this position because unfortunately there's a checkmating threat here on h1. So you can't play bishop g7, so instead most people will try and remove knight to d4. But here black is still okay. Say bishop to g4, pawn to f3, bishop to e6. Let's say captures, 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 and the move rook to f8, a really good defensive move, preparing rook to f7, and it looks bad at first, but black is a piece up, and most likely white will have to capture and go into this position where I think black is totally fine. So that is the move 10 knight to a3. So if instead of knight a3, white goes the move knight to c3, then we can play the move Queen to c7, f4, knight to f6, bishop to d2, pawn to b5. We can also play, let's say, pawn to b6 at um, some point in the game. That's also fine if you don't like the move pawn to b5, because sometimes you can get hit with the move pawn to a4, so some people prefer putting the pawn on b6. But in this position, um, I'm going to recommend something very similar to what I showed you before. So whenever they're going for this sort of e5 idea, I'm just going to suggest to move pawn to b4. And the knight drops back and black castles here to the king side. Again, you can't capture the pawn. And black is threatening pawn to a5 and bishop a6, followed by queen b6 to trade off this dangerous light squared bishop after which black will be more or less fine. So that covers all the main lines in the Khan Sicilian. Um, in the next video, I'll probably show you what to do in the C4 Maroxy bind positions with the hedgehog setups for black and the ideas in uh, those lines. I think that's the one that's going to put a lot of players off from playing uh, the black side of this opening. But otherwise, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or questions, do feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Otherwise, I will catch you guys on the next one. Take care.